Welcome back everyone, I'm RC, this is Spartan Ops episode 4, Didax Hand, and chapter 4, The Chase on the Cauldron. I'm RC, in case you don't know already. I like Halo, I like uh, doing it on higher difficulties, and I like kicking ass. This is my loadout. It's pretty much stand my standard Spartan Ops loadout, DMR, Plasma Pistol, uh, Regen, AA Efficiency, and Ammo. So I've just been jumping around through several portals and then apparently we've come into close contact with where Julian Dama is. So we're like, oh, go get him, go kill him. I'm supposed to chase him across this map. Uh, what actually happens is we just fight through a bunch of enemies. It's pretty much the reverse of episode 1, chapter 5, core on the cauldron. So you just go the exact opposite direction. And yeah, again, you start off with coveys. You have some Prometheans towards the end as well. You actually have quite a lot of Prometheans towards the end of this one. So we're going to go up to this gate first. Quite a few enemies got to clear out first. Then we're going to not be able to open it for some reason. Then some guys can come down. Going to have to kill those. Then we're going to hit, hit some buttons. Make our way through. Many more ambushes along the way. Extra enemies coming down. Right at the end, we get sort of stuck up against a little bunch of Promethean knights, right outside where the guy's supposed to be that we're chasing. A chasing in inverted commas. Smash! There we go. Same map as the core, obviously. So you've also got these infinite ammo crates. Just going to hit that trigger there. Miller, find can't get through, but this is an okay place for all these guys. They will come up to you occasionally if you piss them off enough. Just be ready to back off very swiftly. Make sure you have enough plasma pistol left. The um, storm rifle I wouldn't really recommend for anything, so you can go ahead and dump that. So I'm gonna dimmer all the grunts. Pepper and dimmer the elites as well. You know the drill by now, come on. Wanna always keep close to that cover so you can dip back in it. And don't waste ammo shooting into the back of grunts. Just pick a new target, there's always gonna be another one facing this other way. Oh, here's one of these aggressive ones. Oh, I almost thought you stuck me there. That was pretty bad. Whoa. Don't need to throw grenades, I just like doing that to mix things up. What's pretty amazing to me is that the plasma pistol is actually really accurate. Like more accurate than the rifles. Like even if you are really careful with the rifles, you can't get that same kind of accuracy. It's a ridiculous weapon. That's again not the weapon I want. Okay, found the controls for the door. Marking them now. If I remember correctly, the plasma rifle in Halo 1 did actually have sort of more of that long range um, ability to hit plasma shots on target, but they just made it sort of more random and more like a, a submachine gun in later games. And I think in hindsight that was kind of a mistake. It made the plasma pistol way too powerful, basically. You, you never not want a plasma pistol in campaign, or in Spartan Ops. So there's button number one. Because obviously the guy in my head knows where all the buttons are better than I do. Because he's using the scanners on my suit to scan the area, which I can't use. Uh, but he can use remotely very efficiently. I like that. Button 
personally, as a kind of computery tech guy, I would just go around to all of the buttons and be like, does this do anything? A door's opening here. And I would have hit all of those buttons eventually anyway. So I could have done it in about half the time. If I was me and not Crimson. So here's some Prometheans. They just throw in a few Prometheans, a little change of pace. Oh, I hate watches. But these ones just concentrate on one side because they're all going to be drawn to this scripted location where they're trying to spawn the turret. And so that can give you a good time to headshot all of them. Well, if you can even see the head if they're not facing the other way, that is. Rather than when they're flying around. And then... Have a nice little surprise. But I have a surprise for him. And then we're back to Covey's for a little bit. And then again, Prometheans right at the end. And that's going to be fun. Quite a lot of elites, fairly aggressive. There's going to be some sword elites as well. Can always take them out with a DMR. Can always go back for more ammo. There's no problem with that. Should still be some plasma pistols and stuff. And again, you can also fall back to the storm rifle if you've got nothing else in the area behind you. So just give yourself space. Also, some beam rifles in that crate. That can be fun. Ah, oh, should have had him. Not really a very fast chase, this. It's, it's not like a, a, a car chase or parkour chase or anything. It's kind of like a. I'm gonna mow down your entire minion army. Oh, check out that no scope. That was totally a headshot, guys. Whoops. Can have another one of those because that's pretty fun. In multiplayer, the beam rifle is pretty good for no scoping, it's got a fairly high auto aim. But apparently, they're actually nerfing that in the title update that's coming out. Well, sorry, not title update, but they're gonna like tune the weapons pretty soon. So we have air support drones that can do airstrikes on demand and yet the target locator is not a thing in Halo 4. Why is that? Like in Reach, it, you just like, here's a target locator, it can destroy things, it's awesome. And you know, Palmer's getting to control airstrikes in, you know, danger close to us but we're not allowed to do that. That is lame. Oh, also I like jumping on this little ledge because it gives me a bit of a distance uh, from the enemies. And I can also just sort of back up and drop down into cover whenever I need to. And go search for ammo. There's one of the other locations. Halo is one of those games that taught me to obsessively compulsively reload. You can't carry full ammo unless your magazine is absolutely full. Oh, it's reloading. That's why when I'm playing like other games, like Battlefield or something, and I shoot one guy, I'm like always, always reloading. Even if I've only fired like one burst. Depending on the game, you don't actually need to because you can just sort of walk over ammo and pick it up anyway, even if your magazine isn't full. Unless it's Rainbow Six, of course. Then that's a completely different ballgame. Come on, guys. Ooh, don't mind if I do. 
also a crate with a whole bunch of fuel guns here, which I'm going to take because why not? I've got so much, and I'm so bored of plasma pistol overcharges. Change things up a little bit. Oh, I could have done that. You could have like drop potted a target locator for me. It's okay, Palmer. You can say it. He's a slippery son of a bitch. Because he is. Although, to be fair, he bought himself plenty of time with all those minions he threw at us. All those minions he threw at us. So, this is the finale. Whole bunch of Prometheans. Just knights and watches here. So, as a general rule, I'm going to take out the watches first off, obviously. Hoping to get a few quick kills in there. It didn't really happen. They don't really advance much. They'll come almost to the top of this ramp, but then no further. Uh, they'll also teleport. There's gonna be several waves, so you're gonna have to be here for a while. So, if watches are supposed to be the same night soul or whatever and they can actually split it up into like seven watches and the night you know if this was the Harry Potter universe that would make him like almost impossible to kill or or each of their individual forms impossible to kill I don't know what I'm saying here something about uh, it just making it more tedious to kill all of them I think that's the point I have to take them out all in all in a row. Oh no, he's got an incineration cannon. It's okay. He aims too low for it to really be much of a threat. He's always like aiming at your feet, so he just ends up, you know, even though he can't actually see your feet, he's aiming for them still, so he hits the ground in front of you. No problem. And I've actually got quite a lot of ammo here, so I'm like, do you know what, why don't I just dim him to death? Just be a little bit careful of those secondary explosions. There we go. Ow. What do you mean there's more? Oh. Fine, I will go back and get something else this time. Maybe? Maybe a plasma pistol? Fortunately, there's a buck of dimmer right there. And plasma pistols in the FRG crate. I mean, if you had to make do as much as you did on, what was it, episode 1, chapter 3? No, it's a different one. You know that one I was complaining about a lot? Sacred on the refuge, yeah. They had like no ammo. Then it would be tough. But it's okay like this. Come on, we've already had the boss. Die. Swear I had his face already. Oh yeah, I got a well done from Palmer. Oh, now the portal closes. Typical, isn't it? Ooh, thingy. Pick up object. Don't touch it. Oh, now you tell me not to touch Commander it. Commander Palmer to Galileo Base. Owen here. Go ahead, Commander. Crimson's bringing a package your way. Prep your labs. 
I want a good look at it before I let it on board Infinity. Um, okay. Yes, let's take it to the base that gets continually attacked. That sounds like a smart idea. But anyway, mission complete. Chapter complete, rather. Chase, 14 minutes 58. Done. 110 kills. No deaths. Legendary solo. Why not have a go yourself? <laughs> if you dare. Anyway, I will see you on the next mission. Chapter 5, Dadek's Gift on Galileo Base. Uh, whenever that comes out.